I'd like to say at the outset of this video that, generally speaking, I agree with people such as Steven Pinker, who relentlessly point out various forms of human progress, usually using actual data to back up their claims, and are of the view that things are looking up for humanity. Generally speaking, in some sense, I agree with that. And Coltane, the great kangaroo lord himself, believes that wholeheartedly. However, despite all these forms of progress, I don't think that progress comes without costs. I think that the definition of human progress can be encapsulated in the idea of the double-edged sword, that it cuts one way, but it also cuts another. And where you have gains on one side, you have losses on the other side. Now, sometimes we have to acknowledge that whatever gains have been made and whatever losses have been accrued as a consequence, that this is something that we cannot fundamentally change. For example, we're not anytime soon going to unmake the internet. I wouldn't wish that. But the internet, we have to acknowledge, is in many ways a double-edged sword, a double-edged blade. It has brought benefit, but it has also brought harm. And so the topic of this video is what I refer to as the 21st century blues. Broadly speaking, people who were born in the 21st century, very, very young people, obviously, because now they would be a maximum of 19, and to a somewhat lesser degree, people born in the late 90s, but specifically the 21st century blues refers to a recurrent phenomenon I observe in young people, and specifically young men online, who have become lost to the winds of fate, as it were. And despite all the progress that we've made as a species, the progress that has been charted and documented by one Steven Pinker, I do think at the micro level, there are serious issues, issues that have yet to be spoken of, in part because they're brand new. We have to understand that the internet has created a completely new environment, an environment that is as yet not well documented. We don't have a lot of good data on what's going on in terms of social interactions and how it's molding young people's minds. And so much of what I have to talk about is unfortunately observational and anecdotal. But we have to work with what we have. And I was motivated to make this video out of concern. I've always been concerned for the welfare of men and specifically young men. And the game has changed, it's not the same. It's not even the same these days for this Generation Z, these Zoomers, as it is or was for the Millennials. The rules of engagement are different. And what I've noticed, what's exceedingly common, is very young men, teenagers, becoming completely absorbed on platforms such as Discord and some other places, oblivious to their actual environment. But when you press them and ask them what's going on, you realize that their real environment, IRL, in real life, is not giving them what they need. And so I'll routinely encounter young men or teenagers who are up on weekdays when they have school the next day at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. U.S. time, and they're talking about things that either they probably shouldn't be talking about in the sense that you couldn't repeat what they're talking about here on YouTube, or things that are just completely irrelevant. LARPing is a very common thing. This is a very common theme that I encounter again and again and again. And indeed, the case in point I want to mention is a young man I'm fairly familiar with who is really lost at sea. And I think he's prototypical in many ways for what I describe as the 21st century blues, in the sense that he does not find social interaction satisfying at his school, for example. As a consequence, he has migrated from an actual physical environment where one socializes to the internet, and specifically Discord, to find like minds, as it were, and find people that he can converse with, specifically people who are usually older because he cannot relate to his peers. Never mind the females in his age category, which, as we all know, that's a story unto itself. And at home, standard situation, you have a father who works his butt off and is not really aware of what's going on, and a mother who is a quote-unquote housewife who is, I don't know what she's doing, doing what housewives tend to do, 
and a sister who's doing perfectly fine and enjoying a normal social life, whereas he is floundering in isolation, anxiety, and worry about the future, about the present, and the general lack of understanding that is directed towards him. Now, this is a real person, but it could be any number of people out there, young men that I encounter and young men I have yet to encounter. Again, observational and anecdotal. And so this is one of these new problems that has arisen as a result of the digital age. In former times, there might have been no refuge for such young men, no place to go. But I think much of this comes down to two factors. One, the generation that has given birth to these Zoomers is, frankly speaking, completely clueless as to the realities of social interaction on the ground. And they're not particularly aware of the technologies that the Zoomer generation employs. So there's no way they can give them relevant information or indeed advice. I'm not a fan of advice. I think it is the worst advice. But there's nothing a 40-something-year-old father or 50-something-year-old father can tell his Zoomer child that will be really, really relevant in terms of social interaction because the playing field is so vastly different. And indeed, if you're by nature an introvert and would have been a pariah in a former social setting, well, the Internet does offer many possibilities. So what I want to do is talk about, not as advice, but some observations I can make that might be helpful to the younger generation. Obviously, first and foremost, being aware of the realities between the sexes is very important. You don't have to be MGTOW per se. That's not a requirement for anybody. But being aware that there's a certain dynamic that exists between males and females of the human species and that this dynamic can be very difficult and it's not what it's cracked up to be and it's certainly not the picture that has been painted for the sake of the public or public consumption. That's something that every young man of any generation will benefit from knowing. But the reality is, and I think we need to be honest about this, that manosphere or not, MGTOW or not, that doesn't give people a sense of meaning or purpose. Going your own way on its own is just something you do. There's no meaning inherent to it. And whilst it can open up certain doorways and avenues of pursuit, it doesn't do anything by itself. So telling young men, here's the deal between men and women, go your own way, that doesn't really do anything. It doesn't achieve anything. It doesn't really help them other than give them some knowledge. But again, in the current atmosphere, what are they supposed to do with that? Where are they supposed to go? So I want to go a little bit more into depth on some of these things. And this particular young man expressed concern about relationships in general, not just with women, but social interactions. And something that most people of my generation and older are completely unaware of is something that people, frankly speaking, don't want to talk about, and that is virtually every human relationship is highly contextual. What do I mean by that? Contextual in the sense that when you are in a particular context, you will have some kind of relationship with a person, whether a man or a woman. And by that, I mean just social interaction. And when you leave that context, that relationship tends to, and I would argue almost invariably, dissipates. This is particularly true on the Internet. Things come and go. Things are arguably a bit more transient on the Internet. But having lived all around the world in some capacity, I've noticed this where you're in a certain place in a certain period of time, and as the fates would have it, they bring you together with people you otherwise would not talk to because you might share a certain cultural background or even a language. I remember the first time I began studying German earnest, I spent a lot of time with Americans just because it was easy and convenient. I later changed that routine, but yeah, that's what we do. And depending on the context, people move on, matter of fact. I don't really talk to anyone I knew 10 years ago. And that is something that is becoming ever more common for all people, but that's especially true of the transient nature of the Zoomers. Now, why is this observation so puzzling to so many people? Well, I think there are a number of reasons for this. In former times, communities were stronger. People didn't move around a lot, and the Internet simply didn't exist. 
And so out of that situation came the perception that friendships are lifelong, relationships are lifelong, and you just stick with the people that you're around because they're always around. The fact that Bob was down the street mowing his lawn was a phenomenon you could observe for years, if not decades. That's not the case anymore. And that's very disconcerting, and we have to be honest, that social relationships are ultimately very important to most people. Most people require them to persist and to have a sense of self. Otherwise, they exist in a vacuum. I think this is an important point because the older generation can't grasp that relationships are constantly changing and the youngins, the young men in particular, have nothing to grapple onto, nothing to hold on to. And so they jump from Discord server to Discord server. They go on the internet in search of something meaningful, almost inevitably never finding it. And in their own lives, they're in situations such as the one I described, where you have a worker drone father, a mother who is completely ignorant of the needs and desires of her own son, and a sister who's enjoying the good life, and the son is just sort of left to flounder in a state of anxiety, sleep deprivation, and otherwise. Very, very common. I've observed this countless times. Does this mean this is normal? I don't know. Again, this is not well studied. This is a brave new world, no pun intended. And one lesson, as I said, that I think is important to drive home is that going forward, the transient and contextual nature of human interaction and relationships will become ever more apparent. Gone are the days where the bonds of sedentary community will hold together people. That's just not a thing anymore. It might be in some places. But what do you do if you're an earnest looking for community but can't find it in your local environs, you're going to look elsewhere, most probably the internet. And this is something that, one, the older generation is not aware of, but two, something that I don't think they want to tell people. It's not a particularly pleasant truth to tell people that these people that you know now that you're friends with will no longer be your friends in a couple of years because the context of your life has changed. Now, most people are familiar with that in the sense of relationships, romantic relationships. They come and go. But in the fair weather days we inhabit on planet Earth, it's much the same with human beings. There is one caveat here. And I think this is an eventual silver lining in the dark clouds I'm describing. And that is, despite all the problems with the Internet, it does have some boons. The fact that on the Internet... If you're sufficiently fortunate, you can meet people of like mind that you get along with where the context is abstract and therefore can transcend community and transcend the local constraints that would exist in real life and possibly even transcend time, although as viewpoints tend to shift and change, that's not an absolute. And that might be a silver lining. But what I really think is necessary for this up-and-coming generation is for people to start studying these things. We don't know what's going on yet because people haven't taken the time to really look into it, to my knowledge. And there's another factor here, too. It's all well and good to have the fortune to be born and raised in a two-parent household, but when your father is clueless about reality because he's either too old or his own experiences don't allow for him to be clued in, what do you do? There definitely is a persistent lack of mentorship. When that happens, young men are going to look elsewhere. So I think one thing that is just being grossly ignored in the mainstream is addressing the social concerns of men. I've talked about this to some degree on my video on male friendship, but we have to be honest that that only scratches the surface. There's something new afoot, and I'm very concerned. And I think in addition to red-pilling men on males and females and romantic relationships, they need to be aware of the brave new world we live in, where, frankly speaking, friendships come and go almost as frequently as romantic relationships. And deep bonds of friendship are very difficult to establish, and they're highly contextual. And that's not just true of that generation. I know guys in their 30s who, sadly, don't really have any real friends. And 
that's not a criticism. It's more a commentary on the sad state of affairs because fair weather friendship, the context of things change constantly, and therefore these people prove to be unreliable, and then eventually they just completely give up on the idea. It's all well and good that the metrics of economic success are increasing across the globe, and health is increasing, and more and more people are literate and reading and can do basic arithmetic and take your pick of whatever other metric a Steven Pinker might cite, there are new things to deal with. You could argue that some of these problems are quote unquote 20th century problems. Well, in the 21st century, we have a different set of problems. And as always, problems are not necessarily solved. Everything's a trade-off. The new social environment, how it affects men, is something that is vitally important. And hopefully in the coming years, I can look at some actual research apart from relying on my own anecdotal and observational efforts to come up with some ideas of how these young men might be helped. I certainly don't have an idea. I'm stupid ignorant, and my experiences almost certainly don't apply to them, at least in their specific situations, and more broadly, I'm my own person, they're their own person. But somebody needs to do this, if only because, as is always the case, the men are going to get the short end of the stick. We know this, as Colting pointed out in his recent video, about the alarming statistics regarding what happens to women, which are totally hyperbolic and exaggerated. Meanwhile, all the things regarding men are either downplayed or wholesale ignored. Well, this is going to be an ongoing problem socially and in general for the development of young men of the 21st century of this generation. Gentlemen, as always, if I'm still alive and hale and healthy enough, I will see you later. And more importantly, may the gods give you more than they take away from you. Goodbye and take care. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.